Yeah, you like my perfect work day hair. <laughs> Hi, this is Helen with the Better Half blog. Thanks for joining me today. Today, we're gonna talk about goal planning. I think it's the perfect time of year to talk about this topic because I actually just worked on mine yesterday. So there was a lot of research going into this um, because as we know, um, every year we have a new resolution. We have all these new set of goals that we want to hit up for the whole year and then what ends up happening a lot of the times and i'm sure some of you guys can relate for me uh, a lot of things fell out throughout the year that i created last year for as my goals so i wanted to go into this topic with the idea that i am actually going to follow through so that is the most important thing um, this year is for me to follow through on the goals that I set out for myself. That also means that you cannot have like hundreds of different goals because what happens then, you just get too busy with life and it just is not realistic sometimes. So I am actually going to go through with you to show you kind of my process and how I work this into my goals and then into my actual functional planning on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly and year process. If you're like me and you have questions as to what system might work and what you know method, you might wanna give it a try this year, keep watching. I have my Stalogy in this cover um, called Moterm and it's, it's a wonderful notebook to do your bullet journaling and I think all your brain dumping because I did a lot of that. I did a lot of journaling in here. Okay, in my process, um, there are some tools that you're going to need. Uh, one is a ruler and I am using this Zig clean color dot, but you could also use, and I'll show you a different way as well if you just have pen. I have a pen here. This one is a Muji pen um, from Japan and I got this as a gift from one of my friends and a highlighter of the color of your choice, meaning a color that you you love, that makes you happy. And yellow lately has been my color. So I am using yellow as my highlighter for my goal planning. Okay, so once you have that, you just need a nice little notebook. It could be any notebook. It could be your Stalogy, your bullet journal, your note journal. It could be a Hobonichi Weeks. Um, on the back pages there, you have any notebook, just use it. Um, I have this Nolte um, and I'm starting the goal planning process here for the company. Um, so I have that as well. And so you can really pretty much use anything. Um, and the other one that you can use is your Hobonichi cousin. Okay, so I have my page markers here and I am ready to go. Okay, so I take a ruler and first thing I do is you have two pages. You're going to need both pages here. So once you do that, now you're going to split the middle and you don't have to use a ruler. You literally could just fold the page like this in half. I've seen a lot of people do this and have yourself that, you know, divided, divided page and same thing as well on this side. So you in case you're on the go and you're like still wanting to do your goal planning, you totally can do that. Okay, now you're going to think about how many goals you're going to put into your life in the year 2021. So if this is for me, I had to sit there with my strategy and literally take notes to myself. I, this is kind of my process of how I started it. I was taking notes. I was like, what do I want to do? So I did extensive research on how this process was gonna work for me and what really are my top priority goals for 2021. In other words, what would make me so super happy at the end of 2021 to sit here and be able to look and measure up my goals to what has actually happened throughout the year. I want to lose weight. It would be it's totally exciting for me to look at myself in the mirror at the end of 2021 and see how fit I am, how healthy I am, um, that I've been eating well, I've been exercising on a, on a regular basis, and really being mindful of, of all the things that I was doing with my body. Now, let's suppose that you have like me, you have four goals. So you're just gonna divide up the pages into four.
Okay, now on the top, you're gonna take that favorite color that makes you happy, highlighter, and you're gonna highlight the top section like this. Okay, and then now you're going to use that pen of your choice and put year, month, week, and daily. So there we have a nice setup. Okay, so the skeleton's done. Let's go into the goal process. Now I'm gonna give you two examples and I'm not actually gonna fill out the whole page, but I'm gonna give you work with two examples, okay? So one is to get fit. Okay, so that's one. And here is where I use my SIG and I would just put a dot there, but like you saw me, you could just put a little dot with your pen and that totally works fine. And then next, what is a goal for you, son? Me? Yeah, just um, give me an example to work with here. Um, just time, give me one. Time management. Oh, that's a good one actually, because that was a big one for me last year. And that's how I found journaling and all that kind of stuff and planning. So, okay, so time management and get fit. So as you go from the year all the way to your daily, as you go to the right, you're gonna realize you're gonna put more details, okay? Because from here, it's an idea. It's a goal, it's an idea. Then you go here and you're like, on a monthly basis, if I were to measure it up, what do I need to do? So now we're going into actions, right? What, what do we need to do on a monthly basis? And then on a weekly basis, what do I need to do? And, and we really want to get realistic and really the, it's gotta be action oriented tasks going this way. So get fit. So on a monthly basis, let me use my dot, you want to work out regularly. Um, another one you might want to do is eat better. Healthy, healthier food. Um, three, you might say something like start a new workout I've been putting off. You know, for me, that was Pilates for many years and I started Pilates two years ago and it was wonderful until this pandemic happened and then I had to kind of quit my membership because I wasn't going anywhere. Okay, then on a weekly basis, what do you need to do to get fit? So from here, we're gonna pull it out. So work out regularly. So how are you going to make that? So I am, for me, um, add work out routines into weekly planner and my EVEC. And I will even put that so I know to reference it. And work out routines, but then how many times a week? Maybe you want to give yourself a set of days that you want to work out. Maybe four to five days of workout. Um, eat better, less takeout, and cook three to four meals at home. And then maybe eat healthier meal plan and order or shop ingredients weekly, right? Moving on to the daily now, you see how it's getting more detailed and actionable. Now we're going to the daily. So on a daily basis, what do you need to do? Work out and track. Maybe you have a tracker on your weeklies. Days I don't work out. walk 6,000 steps. Um, the next thing you might wanna say is to eat uh, well and meal plan. So now you've meal planned on, on the week, so on a daily basis, cook at home. Okay? Um, and make it fun. Listen to podcasts. 
while I'm cooking. Whatever, something favorite, music. Enjoy your time cooking. These are kind of your actionable tasks, right? Um, for myself, I put um, add workout to AM routine. So my morning routine actually has my workouts in there because this is one of my goals actually, right? So this is kind of how you want to go to the right as you start off with an idea, your goal that you really want to prioritize and be mindful of this year in 2021. Then going into the month, what do you need to do? Okay, and then the week and then the daily. For me, I actually have a set of number pounds that I want to drop this year. And, and that's a part of my idea of getting fit. With me, dropping actually like a number of pounds, I actually had to divide it up through the months, the weeks, and the dailies. So that way I kind of have an idea of, okay, in a month I need to drop two to three pounds a month or one to two pounds a month, you know, throughout the year, throughout the 12 months. Um, so you wanna have those measurable numbers if you can, okay? So these are all numbers that can be measured right? Work out four to five days, three to four days. And so these will now play a big part when it goes into your actual functional planner. Time management, same thing. You're going to go through the month and basically tell yourself what you're going to do in a month and how are you going to measure that. Week, how are you going to measure it? On a daily, how are you going to measure it? and act upon it. So this is kind of the idea of your goal planning process. Okay, so suppose we finish this side. Don't give yourself a pressure to finish it all today. Let yourself think about it. Let yourself to make notes, scratch it off, white it out, rewrite, try it again and rewrite it. And then maybe on a clean piece of paper, you wanna start fresh and write, chop those down. And that's exactly what I did here. So I started out really messy, had a bunch of brain dump in here. What can I do? What can I do? And I deleted some, I added some. I mean, it was just insane. And then I went into um, this whole idea. And then now let's show you on the weekly how I've decided to work out my functional planner to work alongside this. I watched a YouTube channel and in my process of research on goal planning process and how I can apply that into my life on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, without dropping my goals that I worked so hard to create, I found this channel and it's called MKTV. Now it's in Korean, so you might not be able to watch it. This is the process that she uh, teaches and she lectured about. And I really took it to heart because it really made sense to me. So she has this method called 2H1T. Okay, so when we plan our functional planners, in our functional planners, typically what we do is we're very to-do, task-oriented. Um, what she talks about here in the 2H1T, so let's go through the, the letters. First H is highlight. So what she calls highlight is the future. So she talks about how we in our daily lives, when we plan out the day, we're typically so focused on this task and to do. And she said she doesn't start her day like this. Now she's a very famous YouTuber as well as her business is just one of the top. And um, she has even created a planner with this method um, and very highly successful woman in her 50s, I think. So highlight is talking about the future. So what does that mean? We're talking about these goals. So how are you going to apply that into your daily today action? Suppose this is your daily planner and this is January 1st, 2021. And this is the actual page for the planner. She starts off her whole AM routine based on this. So that's what we call highlight. So let's put highlight here. And she will start with, so if we, suppose we have two goals for the year, 
get fit, and time management. Now she'll go through the daily do's of what she needs to do. So she needs to work out. So number one, work out. And, and she might put a circle like this, or maybe you could use, make it fun and use the dot that you could check off later. Um, then she's gonna do, okay, if I didn't work out, then work, walk 6K steps. So in case she doesn't have the workout session in the morning, did she do the steps? Um, cook at a home, make it fun. Maybe she has a meal, so like, I don't know, tacos. Taco salad, let's do salad, so we're trying to eat fresh. Taco salad, um, add work to AM routine. So this is her AM routine. So she'll start off like this, and then she will then go to the second age, habits. Now, for some of you working out, taking steps, and eating and meal prepping might be your habit, right? Because it's not your goal. But in this instance of an example, this is actually a goal. So those are highlights. Now going into the habits, for you, it might be something else like, for example, tidy zone one, laundry, one load take vitamin, drink water, and maybe you want to put a tracker next to it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, eight cups of water. The habit now is talking about current, right? Taking care of your current self, right? So we cover the future, we cover the current, and now we're going to go into the last part of this, HH, which is the actual task, to do's, okay? And that's when you start putting in your actionable tasks that you need to do. Maybe call mom, dentist appointment at 2 p.m. And those are your to do's. Then at the end of the day, she talks about this T. So then one T, equals thanks so now you're turning your day into gratitude so thanks or gratitude if you will and just journal about her day and even on those tough days she talks about how we should turn it into good and there's a good out of every situation somehow and by doing that we're actually making ourselves healthier happier right being able to look at the good things in life the brighter side in life because let's face it we have to work hard every day we have to actually work to hit our goals we have to work to hit our habits to maintain our current situation and then do the do so there's no fire. And then to be able to go and reflect that towards the end of your day is how she talks about using your planner to really effectively work for you to not only take care of now, right? Which we're typically totally interested and um, really primarily working on our to do's, but to be able to take care of ourselves, the things that maintain us and our lives, our families, and then to actually have a future and build your future, a growth, something that you wanted to ever learn. Like I wanna learn Japanese. So hopefully one day, my, one of my goals for the year would be learn Japanese, right? Um, you know, and things like that, that you've been putting off through the years and saying that you're busy only working on the to do's throughout your year, to be able to work on all these different functions of your life to actually build a future. You're gonna build your family, community, and then, yeah, make a difference. That's what I have for you. Now, I want to show you what I did with using my goals onto my actual planner. So, opening up my Avec, and I'll do a whole video on my Avec, um, flip through and just kind of showing you what I've done to it to make a difference for me and my functional situation. 
But here is my EVEC and how I applied it into next week's functional planner. So on the left here on the sidebar, you're going to see my habits. I have my schedule here. And these are all things that I got from my future log in my Notion, which I'll show you on a different video. But I also, from the Notion, I take it down to my monthly calendar once a month. And I have all those appointments and things that I know are going to happen on a certain day written down on my month. Then on my weekly, as I schedule out my weekly, I flip back to my monthly to see, okay, what is happening on this week? I add that onto the top, which is under schedule. Then in the middle section here, I have tasks. So these are my to do's today um, on each day. Then on the bottom, I have the highlights. So this is kind of like what I'm going to work on, these red dots here that you see, to work towards my future, to build my future. So I'm not only working on today or maintaining good habits, but also working on my future goals on a daily basis, not skipping days or trying to do other things once a month, you know, going back to my goal and saying, oh yeah, I was trying to lose weight, you know, this month I should eat better. It's a matter of how are you using your highlights, you know, your goals every single day so that at the end of the year, 2021, these, how have my goals, you know, come into fruition. So that is how I'm using my functional planner now. And then on the on the left free grid space right here, I'm actually even using this calendar because I, I kind of wanted to utilize everything that's on this page. And I want to record my workouts here, highlight those days or maybe using a dot to just put a dot on the days that I did work out. Um, and then my meal planning, I started Tuesday, Tuesday tacos, because I have some taco stuff ready to go. And then I'm going to look up some recipes this weekend to go through and line up my meals for the week. My lunch, um, now kids are starting school on this day, so I'm going to start packing lunch for them. So I have lunches lined up here. And then I have my minimal, so these are my four spaces that I'll be focusing on each month. Um, so on a weekly basis, I'll be working on those four spaces to declutter and I won't finish it on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. It'll finish at the end of the month. That's what I'm hoping. Because when you look at my goal planning on the back section here, I talk about how with my minimal, I'm going to focus on a monthly basis. I'm focusing and picking four zones to declutter. Then on a weekly basis, I'm going to focus those on those four decluttering spaces and six cleaning spaces, right? So it could be a kitchen. It could be the dining room. It could be under the stairs, on the stairs. It could be the carpet upstairs, whatever that is and how you want to divide up your zones. That's how I'm doing it here. So that's how I have the four dots on the D's. And so I'm going to pick my four zones that I want to declutter. And then six C's, which is the cleaning space, as you see here. Then on my dailies, what I'm doing is I'm only spending 20 minutes to declutter one of the four zones or all the four zones, whatever I want to do, give me some freedom to do that. And then 20 minutes to clean. So on a daily basis, I'm working on my future, my goal that I have set out for 2021 for a better, cleaner home here. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and all the highlights, this is majority is my routine. It's added into my AM routine, my PM routine, and also again, 20 minutes declutter. So if, if I finish my 20 minutes of decluttering on this day, I'm going to check it off. 20 minutes of clean, check it off. It's not so overwhelming that I cannot do it. So a lot of the times what I did was uh, for the last several years, I've been working on kind of cleaning this space to minimize our home a little bit more and what i did was i would typically just work on a zone that is giving me anxiety and then i would end up putting a lot of those stuff in a different zone <laughs> and then i would be overwhelmed and i would stop so this year as i'm following this 2h1t process and method what i'm doing is i'm working on the zones each day for just 20 minutes 
that's not overwhelming. It's not too much to where I feel like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Forget that goal, <laughs> you know? So that's how I'm using my functional planner on a weekly basis. Now on a daily basis, what I'll probably do, I have some other notes and um, articles that were interesting to me here, but finishing off with that gratitude, I'm going to actually start doing here. So whatever notes I took or article that I clipped or whatever it is, I'm going to cross off the last section of the page on a day on the dailies to use it as my gratitude journaling for the day. So I kind of did that on the bottom here, wherever I have space. And again, remember this planner is solely for the purpose of functional planning. And I want to follow through with the 2H1T process of just finishing off today with gratitude. I have um, four goals lined up is to lose some weight, read some books. I really want to get back into reading. I really enjoyed reading throughout my high school, my, all my K through 12 and even in college. But then I started working and it, it just became really difficult. And then with the kids, it's just not easy to read um, as much as I would like to. I first started, um, I kid you not, with 60 books. If you see my brainstorming here, I actually started with 60 books and then I crossed it off and then I put 20 because I wanted to be realistic, realistic to me and my life situation with driving the kids around every day and um, working in between those hours and still being able to hit my other goals as well minimalize and clean home. I want a clean home at the end of 2021 where I can maintain easily without anxiety and, you know, just overwhelmness of cleaning work. And then um, YouTube channel. I really want to create a channel where I create good contents um, to be helpful to people like me who's looking for information to better their life and productivity throughout the year and continually research and develop the channel so that I'm not, you know, just pumping out just to post something, but to actually give you some good contents um, that'll be helpful and use. So my weekly is use uh, my YouTube journal to keep new notes and that journal, I'm using the Campus Diary 2021 weekly. And so this just has the whole year at a glance and then it has all the um, weeklies. So there's no monthlies here, just weeklies throughout the whole thing. And then this is really, really cheap you can get this on Amazon and I'll link this down below. And I use this and I think it's a B6 size. So just to compare it with my Nolte, this is an A5 slim. You have, this is how small it is. And then compare it with my five-year journal. This is the A6, it's this size. So it's just a little tad bit bigger than the A6 size. And then a little bit smaller than your A5 size as well. That's what I have for you today. If you have any questions for me, let me know. Comment down below. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye.